In this video, we're going to learn about if statements in Python. Sometimes when writing programs, we want to execute a section of code known as a block of code only when some condition is true. So for example, we would only allow an adult to vote, but a child could not vote. If statements can be used to make decisions about which block of code to execute next. We call an if statement a control structure or a control flow tool because it controls the flow of execution in our program in terms of which statements we'll execute next. So for example, let's say that our program has a variable age and we're not sure what age is going to be set to. Maybe it's going to be set based on user input, for example, as the program is running. For our purposes, we'll create a variable called age and for now, we'll just set it to 13. So now, let's use an if statement to check the age and if the age is less than 18, let's output that the user is a child and that they cannot vote. So we'll have if age is less than 18, colon, and then here, indented over, print user is a child, print user cannot vote. So if we save our program and run it, we'll get user is a child and user cannot vote. Let's go over our code piece by piece now. First off, this word if here is what's called a keyword in Python. So a keyword is a word with a special meaning in the language Python. We can't use a keyword for things like variable names, for example. So we couldn't have a variable named if. The keyword if allows us to create this if statement here. This here is what's called the if statement condition. It's an expression that's going to evaluate to either true or false. If the expression evaluates to true, then this block of code is going to execute. Otherwise, this block of code is not going to execute. To create the block of code, we indent these statements. In this case, we indent the code by four spaces, which is the standard practice in the Python community. Now, notably, we don't need these brackets around this expression here. I like to put them there, but they're not necessary. We can delete them and save our program, and it's going to work the same way. If we only have a single statement that we want to execute if the condition is true, we don't need to have a whole block here. We could just have the one statement right after the colon here. And this will execute the one statement here when the condition is true. So we can save this and try program out. And now just this one statement executes and we get user cannot vote as output. Let's flip it back to how it was before. Now, what if this condition evaluated to false. So for example, what if age was 19? In that case, the block of code is not going to execute. So we can save this and run our program. And now we get no output at all. And that's because the condition evaluates to false. 19 is not less than 18. So we get false and the block of code does not execute. Now, after the if statement is done its work, execution is going to drop down to the next statement below the if statement. So for example, if we had here print if done, after this if statement is done its work, the next statement to execute is going to be this one here. So if we save our program and try it out, we get if done. Now, if this condition here evaluates the false, we could actually have another block of code execute using what's called an else case. So here we could have else colon and the keyword else allows us to create a block of code that's going to execute if that condition above is false. So we'll have here print user is an adult and we'll also output user can vote. So we can save this and now with the age being 19, this condition is going to be false. So now this else block of code is going to execute. So now let's try the program and we see that the else block of code does execute because we get user is an adult and user can vote. We can also have what's called an else if case. So for example, we could have here E L I F and then age is greater than or equal to 65. So E L I F is another keyword in Python and it's basically a short form for else if, because the way this works is if this condition is false, 
we're then going to check this condition. And if this condition is true, we're going to execute the code in this block. So here we could have print. And because we're checking to see if the age is greater than or equal to 65, we'll output user is a senior if that condition is true. We'll also output user can vote because a senior can vote. Now, if the age was, let's say 65, and we saved our program and ran it, we would then get user is a senior, user can vote. Because what happened here is first, this condition is checked. Because it's false, this condition is now going to be checked. And because it's true, this block of code is now going to execute. Now, if this condition here was also false, in that case, the else block would then execute. So for example, if the age was, let's say 20, and we saved our program and ran it, we would again get user is an adult, user can vote. Now we can have as many else if cases as we like. So for example, we could have another else if case here. We could have else if age is greater than or equal to 100. And in that case, we're going to output user is over 100. So we could then set the age to let's say 110. And if we save our program and run it, we'll then get user is over 100. So the conditions here are going to be evaluated from top to bottom. And if a condition is true, that block of code and only that block of code is going to execute. So only one block of code is ever going to execute. Now, if all these conditions here are false, then the block of code for the else case is what is going to execute. So this is how we can have fairly complex decisions in our program about which block of code is going to execute. Oftentimes we'll see logical operators used to help create more complex if statement conditions. So for example, let's say that we want to check if the user's age is between 18 and 65. We could do that using the AND operator. We could have here, if age is greater than or equal to 18, and age is less than or equal to 65. And here, we could output user age is valid. So if the age was, let's say, 55, and we saved our program and ran it, we would get user age is valid. So here, we're using the AND operator to create what we can call a compound conditional expression, where if this expression evaluates the true, and this expression also evaluates the true, then we're going to output user age is valid. So there are two other logical operators which behave differently than AND, and they're called OR and NOT. There is also a short form version of the if statement. And it looks like this. We could have here print A if age is greater than or equal to 18, else print C. So if we save this and run it, right now we'll get A here because the age is greater than or equal to 18. But if the age was 17 and we saved our program and ran it, we would then get C. So with this form of the if statement, we'll get this expression if the condition is true. Otherwise, we'll get this expression. It's also equivalent to this here. If we had here, if age is greater than or equal to 18, print A, else print C. These two are going to be equivalent. So if we save the program and run it, right now we'll get two Cs and we can see which is which because one is uppercase and one is lowercase. If we set the age to 55 and we save the program and run it, now we get two A's. Sometimes this short form version of the if statement is called the ternary operator. We can use it to evaluate one expression or another based on a condition. So for example, we could set a variable adult equal to true if age is greater than or equal to 18 else we could set it to false. So if the condition is true, 
This expression is going to evaluate if the condition is false. This expression is going to evaluate and we'll set adult to either true or false. We could then output adult here. And in this case, we'll get true. So we can save our program and run it. And we do get true. So this is how we can use if statements in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.